If you use Samsung SmartThings, then you know it can be tough to keep up with new features. So I've compiled all the new additions to that system in today's video. And one of the biggest things that you guys ask me for are ideas for automations. Here's how you get many ideas for automations. When you enter into the Automations tab in the app, there's this icon in the top right takes you to a page called Discover, where you'll find some categories for different automations. Tapping on any of them will bring up an automation that's almost already completed for you. All you have to do is fill out which devices you want to use by tapping into each section where you see this little select device prompt. If you can't fill in a certain part, then you can delete that by hitting the red minus sign on the right hand side. And plus, when you're ready to see how your routine works, SmartThings has added this test routine actions button at the bottom of any automation. It'll run the action so you can see how things play out. And while it won't run things like auto turn off or delays, everything else will run right. And in just a moment, I'm gonna show you how to quickly and effectively sort and work through all your automations. Plus, I'm gonna give you all the newest features that you're gonna love with Samsung SmartThings. So, hang on. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I'm here to save you time with that smart home tech in your home. So if you love that kind of an idea, hit that subscribe button now. On the automations tab, up near the discover icon are the vaunted three dots that usually mean we have a menu. That's exactly what's here is you get search, sort and delete options. The sort button allows you to sort by name or creation date for your scenes and routines and any smart apps that you still have. You can also grab and drag any aspect of the automations tab to sort it in a custom way. This allows you to manage generally by name, but maybe move some of your most often looked at automations or scenes to the top. The delete button allows you to remove all of these different components very quickly, but the search function is the best thing here. Not only does the SmartThings team provide you some suggestions with things like device status or even time or location mode being changed with hashtags next to them, but they also keep your recent searches. And if you don't want those to still be there, you can clear them. Mm. But it's not just automations that you can search through today. Nearly everything in the SmartThings app is now searchable. In fact, you can search in the Discover tab for anything you're after. Also, when you go to the Devices tab and you choose All Devices, you'll find the familiar magnifying glass icon there. This is mostly how I find devices today, and it's especially useful for hubs. If you head to the menu in the bottom right and you go into either the explore or the supported devices option, you're going to find a search bar there too. So I find this really useful for determining if a device is going to work with smart things as you can put in model numbers for the name of a product and then you can switch between device types by tapping up at the top. Now this screen can also be useful to help you narrow down on what types of devices you might want to purchase in the future. Whenever you find a device you're interested in, you can hit the little like button. And then when you return to the main supported devices page, you can tap on that heart up at the top right. There you will find all of your previously liked devices. The Favorites page has undergone some major redesigns. So you'll notice a set of icons up at the top and you can tap into each one. You should see an icon for everything from temperatures in and out of your home, humidity, blinds, shades, and their status, open doors, batteries, and even the status of connected devices. Plus the smart home monitor feature has an icon and I'm betting you all have something else sitting at the top of the app now that I haven't talked about. But it's not just that basic status because as you tap into each of these, you can see the devices that aren't connected in my home. But let's pretend I didn't care about one of those devices because I wasn't using it anymore. I can hit the three dots up at the top right choose select devices and then I can uncheck any of those and they would no longer show up in my list. Now there are a few interesting things to note in this new section that our friend soon 
pointed out over on Twitter. The temperature showing here is the average of my entire home. And if I tap in, I'll get the average in each room. The same thing holds true with humidity sensors too. Today, if I tap into an existing smart light in my home and it has color and temperature control as a feature, you should notice some new options that are very exciting. Today, you could see options for circadian rhythm, a sleep or a gradual dim and brighten option. You could see color temperature control and even some presets for color temperature. All of those options should show up both on the main device page and within options for routines. Now, one caveat to all of this is that it seems like you can only enable one of the circadian rhythm and or sleep modes at a time. This makes sense because those options would be fighting each other for control. And by the way, your light groups that you've created will also have many of these options. Speaking of those routines, what used to happen is if you deleted a device or a service in SmartThings that was used in an automation, the whole automation would be deleted. That won't be the case any longer. So you can go find automations that say they're missing something so you can put a new device or service in place. One of the most exciting improvements for SmartThings is coming from outside of the system. It's really coming from the smart home industry in general. And what I mean by that is we're shifting a little bit away from the standard motion sensor to a presence sensor. And this will give us much better uh, options for automation as well as much better data to build those automations off of. Now, Lewis over at Everything Smart Home created this Everything Presence One sensor, but he didn't have connectivity to platforms outside of Home Assistant until recently. I've seen him testing on Apple HomeKit, but he now has a beta driver for this device. And I've asked Lewis if I could share it with you. So if you happen to get one of these or you want one, you can go order and get this set up and working in seconds with SmartThings. Let's be honest and say that the removal of the old IDE has been painful for a lot of people. And let's also be honest and say that we've all felt some pain as the team has transitioned uh, smart things from Groovy to this new Edge driver program. One of the biggest losses that I have felt is that I can't diagnose issues with my Zigbee and Z-Wave devices. In the past, I showed that the ID had RSSI and some routing information with both Zigbee and Z-Wave networks. Because the IDE is essentially dead, we don't have that anymore but I found a reasonable replacement with some extra features to boot. There's a bit of work to do, so I created a short tutorial for you. That link is down below, but if you follow this page's directions from T. Austin, you'll be able to accomplish this fairly easily. This gives you what's called the API Browser Plus, and although there is a lot of information and different sections you can go through, my favorite part is that I can go to any device, click on it, and then tap on Details. From there, I can get all kinds of information that I can't find in the SmartThings app, and one of those items is the parent ID and the parent name. This allows me to see the routing on Zigbee or Z-Wave devices, which helps you when you're having failures of automations. There are other benefits to this, including seeing the status and history of any device, plus the fact that you can change the edge driver very quickly. This takes a lot longer in the app, so I'm finding this to be much more effective. You can also execute scenes, and the other thing I really like is that I can see the code behind my routines. It's nice to see that it's a cloud or a local routine, but when I go into the details, you read a little bit into how this routine is working, and that might give you some insight into why something's failing. It's also an interface for creating modes, rooms, virtual devices, and more. Plus, there's all kinds of information that I'm not going through here. So check this one out and use the link below to get a setup tutorial. Samsung has released a large number of features that are easy to understand, but all over the app. So let me rapid fire a bunch of those at ya. Philips Hue and Samsung SmartThings have always been great together, but there's a new edge driver developed by a member of the community that makes these two even better together. 
but we've never been able to access Philips Hue scenes in SmartThings and we've never had things like blinking effects either. We've also always had to bring in each light bulb or device individually instead of controlling things by room or by group, which can cause our lights to come on one at a time in automations. Plus, we've never had access to things like the Philips Hue tap dial switch or the Lutron Aurora. This new edge driver fixes all of that, and it does so much more. So check out the link below in the description at the end of today's video, and you'll see how to make your Philips Hue and Samsung SmartThings systems work together in a much better way. You've been able to create lighting and camera groups for some time in the app, but you can now use those in routines to execute actions on the whole group at the same time. This helps with popcorn effects with lighting where multiple come on at different times and it'll help you synchronize effects. You can also choose to execute scenes within the actions of routines, which is a big help for organizing your automations to execute in consistent ways. Although we've already seen the search bar all over the app today, anytime you're looking for a device in an automation, whether it's on the trigger or the action side, you're able to search for your device. One of the big questions coming for a lot of you is what edge drivers do I have installed on my hub? Well, good news, when you go to your hub and then you find the list of drivers, you can search there too. It searches both the channels you subscribe to and the drivers themselves too. Now, there are many examples of official edge drivers coming out from companies, but I have great links for you down below for Aotech, Zoos, Inaveli, and Homeseer, which all have their own official channel set up. In the case of some of them, it's just a subsection of devices, but Aotech pretty much has everything. You'll notice in scenes that there are a few more icons that you can pick from. And you're gonna find the option to send notifications to specific members, either during a scene's execution or within a routine. These are push notifications being sent through the app to specific members. There's a new way to stop smoke alarms if you're using the home monitor feature in the SmartThings app as you'll find a pause monitoring option that gives you an option to set different lengths of time that you'd like to ignore smart connected smoke alarm. Today, there is a whole new class of smart device that you can include in Samsung SmartThings. Those are matter enabled devices and you're gonna see an absolute explosion in the types and number of matter products very soon. I'm, I'm sitting on tons that I can't tell you about. <laughs> and, it's, and it's not like you're gonna have to do anything more than just plug in the product because today, if you have one of the newest settings enabled, then they will simply pop up in the SmartThings app for setup. And then all you're gonna have to do is scan a QR code with your phone's camera, or you can type in the setup code. From there, the rest will happen in the background and the device will come in and use some of the new edge drivers. Samsung has also enabled thread on many of the newer hubs, which means you can even add in some thread devices today. I have two Matter Over Thread products from Eve that I've added into Samsung SmartThings and both are working very well. Plus I have some smart bulbs and some other smart plugs that I brought right into Samsung SmartThings and with them being mostly Wi-Fi devices, this signifies a pretty big turn for Samsung SmartThings towards using these two or newer technologies Thread and Wi-Fi versus Zigbee and Z-Wave. Inside of the SmartThings app, you're gonna find the menu button. Then up at the top right, you'll find a gear icon where you'll find an option to turn on the ask to add new devices setting. This is exactly how your smartphone and the SmartThings app will recognize whenever you plug in a matter over Wi-Fi or a matter over thread device. You need to make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on on your phone. I just wanna take a moment to thank our members here on Automate Your Life. These people make it possible every month for me to create videos just like this. And if you're a consistent viewer, then you know I really did struggle with Matter devices just a little while ago. But the SmartThings team reached out to me and they did some testing. Plus, they made some changes to their app and the firmware on these hubs. And honestly, they've turned around the reliability on Matter. So I can now say that you can go forward and purchase some Matter devices, bring them into Samsung SmartThings. 
Speaking of Matter, EVE has just released their full Matter Over Thread update for the EVE Energy, the EVE Door and Window, and EVE Motion Detector. All three of those devices can now be brought directly into Samsung SmartThings using Matter Over Thread. That's because the Thread radio had been turned on on your V3 or AOTech SmartThings hubs some time ago. So if you have one of those hubs and you want to get some EVE products, you can now use Thread and connect those devices. The one caveat is that you will have to update these products to matter through the EVE app, which is only available on iOS today. So you'll definitely need an iPad or an iPhone, but once they are upgraded, you can bring them into smart things. One of the most often requested features is to use Google Home speakers in your smart things automations. You guys are asking me all the time how you can get your Google speakers to say something custom and the new Edge driver program has opened up an option for this. The Bearded Tech Guy has a great video for you to watch if you're interested in how to do this. And it is fairly technical, so you're gonna need like a Raspberry Pi and a little bit of time and patience. But you can get your Google Nest speakers to be included on the list of notifications in your automations by following that video. The link's in the description below. But what I've done is I have compiled some of the very best Edge drivers available today. That video's up on screen and it will improve your SmartThings system by a ton. It gives you options you never thought possible and it even improves the devices you have in your system now. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.